Hello, this is Robin Norgren. Welcome to the Deeply Rooted YouTube channel and the Walking Meditations, where I take a phrase or a sentence and I walk and meditate on it. Because I do truly believe that everything is spiritual. You can find my podcast over on Spotify or any place that you listen to podcasts under the name Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. Today's walking meditation is titled, There is a Gate. There is a gate. Many things come to mind when you think of a gate. Depending on the style of gate. Sometimes you can see inside. Make a mental choice if it's not worth going inside. Sometimes the gate, it's almost like a door where you have to guess what's inside. It can be there for your safety or it can be there because it's keeping you away from something. Perhaps it's something you want. Perhaps it's something you've never even thought about wanting. The gate. What I find so tricky about a gate is many times you can see the latch. It's just simply a matter of you going and opening the gate. Then you have to face what's on the other side. So it can be either hesitation and fear, or anticipation and joy. I'm sure just like me, you've experienced gates on both sides of the emotions. The gates at the airport or happy re reunions with friends and family. I've had a couple of homecomings with my husband being a military wife where there's that anticipation at the gate. I once had it with my oldest son as well when he first went into the military and when we, he was coming home from boot camp. Life just happened to be that that was the only time I was allowed at the gate. It's tricky that word allowed, right? Because we in the United States always think we have a right to everything. That's true. You also have to steel yourself up for what repercussions come with exercising that right. It 
so much anger and backlash could come with that decision to be at the gate, opening the gate, clawing your way to the place where you are entitled to the gate. And just as many times, you might decide that's worth it. knock open the gate. You can feel that when you're young or when you're old. This year seems to be a very interesting one for me. I turned 52 a couple weeks ago. And the gates look different and feel different in my life. For many years I've felt the call to be in full-time ministry. That gate never really opened, though I tried to push and push. And I will say there have been times I had the opportunity to be at the gate, but with minimal to no pay. It was in spaces that might not have been celebratory of the diversity I was bringing in. So yes, the gate was open, but... I knew what was on the other side of the gate. You know what I mean? Do you ever wonder why is a gate there in the first place? For holding some out and Allowing some in, separation. Jesus talks about a gate and a path. And if the path can be narrow, I think many times that's misrepresented as God holding people back or God choosing some over others. Ah, uh, we need to let go of that idea. We've all been chosen. We've all been chosen. Now, the gate is about do you choose back? You choose the one who's chosen you. Life becomes different. Your thoughts and your heart starts to change. Morning. You actually really get to decide. Whether you want to love more, whether you want to forgive more, whether you want to let go. Because if you understood what was on the other side of the gate, that you've already been chosen to walk into. You would understand these other things are just insignificant props. In the process. That gate leads you to yourself. Isn't that crazy? You think you're already yourself. Yourself is more of a calm of 
circumstances you've been in, situations you've had to endure, the situations you didn't have to endure, the family you've been born into, and your responses to those things. Once in a while, you recognize that you're not really yourself. That actually, there's really more to you. The only way you can get there is on the other side of the gate. Beyond the gate, there's a path, and it's a narrow path, because as you become more and more yourself, more and more unique, more and more individualized, it's not that you become what many people fear, this weird person that just stands out so much nobody understands who you are. They actually have a depth of understanding in themselves, even if they haven't reached for it themselves, that you are more you. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine you don't have to wait till 52 to be more you? Can you imagine that that gate is actually open from the moment you're born? You see, we, we're at a disadvantage sometimes with all of our freedom because we start to have a point of reference about freedom. So not about God's freedom. The gate to freedom. So how do you get to that gate? Well, you're standing in front of it even now. I'll try to describe it to you. You have some sort of thought or notion. And you think, there has got to be more to this. Now, if you're a parent or you have a very busy job or you own a company, there are times you can get so busy with the work and the activities that it might take you a while. But every once in a while, you know, there's got to be more to this. Because yes, work brings you fulfillment. And yes, many times parenting brings you fulfillment. Friends help you pass the time. But when you're all alone, and sometimes even when you're in the midst of those groups that feed your soul so much, maybe you notice something happening there. A gate. A gate to more of yourself. A gate to more understanding about the world and how you're able to play a part. And not in the way where you're having to constantly give and provoke 
conjure up things. But just simply by being a human being, open to God within the collective. That simple. So even in your rest, you're working for the good. When you let go of it all depending on you, something amazing happens. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be merciful to you and grant you peace.